The movie springs into action with Josh, who's a computer whiz, hurriedly making his way through a bustling college filled with students. As he walks, his eyes catch glimpses of strange, ghost-like figures, which makes him feel really freaked out. These figures disappear as soon as he looks back, making him wonder if his mind is playing tricks on him. Josh then decides to head towards an elevator. His goal is to get into the library, where he's supposed to meet up with his buddy Douglas. Like Josh, Douglas is a whiz with computers and he's got something super strange to show Josh that he just stumbled upon. Once Josh steps into the library, the atmosphere changes. It's dimly lit and there's an unsettling vibe. The place feels haunted. He scans the shadowy library, but doesn't see any sign of Douglas. He calls out for his friend, but there's nothing but silence. His heart races as he continues to nervously search the library. In all of these, he clutches a USB drive he's holding like it's some sort of precious treasure. All of a sudden, the overhead light starts flickering, and a cascade of books tumbles from the shelf. One after the other, like dominoes. His gaze is drawn to a dark gap between two bookshelves. Then out of nowhere, a face lunges out with a terrifying scream. Josh is so startled that he stumbles backward, tripping over a cart full of books. He falls to the ground with his face pressed against the cold floor. And then, the unthinkable happens. A chilling creature with pale skin and fingers that are unnaturally long and bony reaches out and grabs Josh's face. It jerks his head to the side with such force. Then, the ghastly being does something that is beyond terrifying. It actually sucks the life and soul out of Josh in a grotesque way. In a lively bar full of people, we see Maddie joining her friends Isabel, Stone, and Tim. They're all gathered around a table laughing and enjoying themselves. Just as the laughter hits its peak, Maddie's phone buzzes. She pulls it out and sees that it's her mom calling. Not wanting to interrupt the fun, she decides to ignore it. Leaning in, she tells Isabel that she was hoping it was a call from Josh, who she's just started dating and is super excited about. Feeling the beat, Stone excitedly asks if everyone's ready to hit the dance floor. Maddie, though, decides to call it a night, leaving the bar. As she gets home to her apartment, she finds a cryptic voicemail waiting for her. It's from her boyfriend, Josh. The message is oddly short, as he just calls and hangs up almost immediately. Worried, she tries to call him back, but it goes straight to voicemail. Unable to sleep because of concern for Josh, Maddie gets out of bed and decides to check on her housemate, Isabel. She peeks into Isabel's room, but she's not there. Instead, she's sleeping with a dude. After receiving a text message from Maddie, Isabel wakes up and hurries back home to be with her worried friend. The next morning, Maddie decides to go check on Josh and heads over to his apartment. When she enters, she's struck by the sight of a computer screen filled with strange codes. Curiosity gets the best of her and she comes closer to get a better look. She then starts glancing around the cluttered apartment, hoping to find Josh. Suddenly, Josh appears out of nowhere, but there's something very wrong. It seems like all of the life and emotion has been drained out of him. It's as if the scary event in the library stole his soul. Then, with a dazed expression, Josh walks into his room with a cable in his hand. Maddie hears some noises and rushes to see what's happening. What she finds is a sight that will haunt her forever. Josh is hanging from the ceiling, having used the cable to end his own life. The shock and horror on Maddie's face mirror the dark and gripping atmosphere of the movie as she realizes that something deeply sinister is happening. Following the shocking events, Maddie is really shaken up and decides to see a doctor who helps people deal with their feelings. A psychiatrist. In the office, she breaks down into tears. She blames herself for not noticing that Josh was in trouble before it was too late. Meanwhile, Maddie's friends, including Stone, try to make her feel better through a group chat. Suddenly, messages start popping up from Josh's account, who they all know is gone. The messages are cries for help. They can't believe what they're seeing and think that someone must have broken in Josh's computer and is playing a really mean trick. They decide they need to meet up. Stone says he'll go to Josh's apartment to turn off his computer, thinking this will stop the messages. At the apartment, Stone starts looking around. Then he hears weird noises, but decides to ignore them and keep searching. 
Out of nowhere, a creepy ghost lady steps out from a dark corner. Stone can't believe his eyes and freezes on the spot. The ghost lady moves towards him, but she's flickering like a bad TV signal. Stone then tries to hide under the bed, but the ghost lady gets to him. Just like what happened to Josh, she steals Stone's soul. After the others tell Maddie that Stone didn't finish what he went to do, she decides she has to be brave and do it herself. She goes to Josh's apartment, but finds out from the lady who owns the building that Josh's computer has already been sold. Determined Maddie finds the guy who bought it named Dexter, she's really mad and yells at him accusing him of hacking into Josh's computer and sending those creepy messages. Dexter's taken aback and defends himself. He opens the trunk of his car to show her that he didn't even take out the computer or turn it on. After seeing this, Maddie leaves. But now Dexter's super curious about what's going on. He sets up the computer and starts seeing really weird videos of people doing terrible things to themselves. It's too much for him, and he quickly turns the computer off. Just then, Maddie and Dexter run into each other again. Dexter decides to show Maddie what he found on the computer. She's horrified by the disturbing videos and rushes out of the room. Now, both Maddie and Dexter know there's something very wrong and sinister connected to the computer, and they must find out what it is. The story gets even more intense as they delve into the dark mysteries that lie ahead. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Tim decides he needs to see his buddy, Stone. When he gets to Stone's apartment, he sees something that makes his heart skip a beat. A video of Stone on the computer. In Stone's room, he finds him partly stuck in the wall, crying out for help. It looks like the wall is pulling him in. Tim is totally freaked out, but reaches out to try and grab his friend. But before he can do anything, Stone gets sucked into the wall and vanishes, leaving a spooky imprint on the wall. Shaken to his core, Tim races back to his own place. He has a wild idea to put tape on his windows and doors, thinking it might keep the scary scuff out. But, uh-oh, he runs out of tape before he can cover the little hole in the door. He thinks he sees something through the peephole, leaning in for a closer look. All of a sudden, a ghastly face with a huge screaming mouth appears. The glass of the people shatters, flying towards Tim's eyes, and the scene goes black. At the same time, Maddie's in her room when she wakes up to bizarre noises coming from her computer. The screen is playing creepy videos all by itself. She's so scared that she yanks the plug out of the wall, but then her printer springs to life. It starts spitting out pages with blurry images, Maddie's hands shaken as she puts the pages together like a puzzle. When she steps back, she realizes it's a super weird and scary face. Later that night, Dexter finds Maddie waiting outside his place. He tells her he found something she has to see. He's got a video diary from Josh that he managed to get off the computer he bought. Meanwhile, Isabel's just trying to do some laundry, but tonight, even that's not simple. Inside the laundry room, the door slams shut and the lights flicker out. The washing machine door swings open, and the clothes start getting thrown out like there's a ghost inside. Curiosity gets the better of her, and she looks inside the machine. Suddenly, a terrifying monster pops out. It's got the creepiest face that she's ever seen. Isabel screams and backs away, but the creature lunges at her, just like what happened to Josh and Stone and sucks the life right out of her. Now, Maddie and Dexter know they're up against something seriously evil. The tension ramps up as they dive into a race against time to unravel this chilling mystery and stop the supernatural force that is terrorizing them. Back at Dexter's place, things are getting really intense. Dexter is super smart and he's able to find the address of a guy named Douglas. He also finds a USB drive that Josh has been holding really tight at the start of the movie. Dexter thinks Douglas might know something important, so he decides he has to talk to him. Meanwhile, Maddie sees something truly horrifying. Her best friend Isabel crumbles into what looks like ashes right before her eyes. She's so freaked out that she calls Dexter, begging him to come and get her. Dexter races over and the two of them head to Douglas's address as fast as they can. They're determined to find this hacker guy and figure out what's going on. When they get there, they knock loudly on the door and call out for Douglas, but one answers. They decide they have to get inside, so they push the door open. 
The room's a complete mess and covered in tape. Suddenly, a guy rushes towards them and slams the door shut. He's yelling something about scary creatures getting in. He then sticks tape over the door. This guy is Douglas, the very person they were looking for, and the one Josh was supposed to meet in the library at the opening scene. Douglas is really worked up and starts talking fast. He tells them that he was working on a special project that had to do with telecommunication. But he stumbled upon something huge, frequencies that were like secret channels to other worlds. He explains that he accidentally opened a door to a different dimension, and now creatures from that place can come through. They use technology like computers and phones to travel, and they can also sneak through shadows. The tape can keep them out because it blocks some kind of special light they need. But that's not all. Douglas tells them that when one of those creepy creatures grabs someone, it steals something inside them that makes them want to keep living. That's why people end up taking their own lives. Dexter and Maddie learn that there's a big computer server that controls all of this, and they have to stop it. That's when they realize that Josh had made a computer virus to mess up the server, and it's on the USB drive he had. Now, everything makes sense. Josh was trying to meet Douglas in the library to give him the virus so they could stop the server together and shut down the spooky door to the other dimension. With this newfound knowledge, Dexter and Maddie are more determined than ever. They decide to work together to find this server, use Josh's virus to mess it up, and save the day by shutting down the creepy connection to the other world. The excitement is at an all-time high as they race against time to stop the eerie creatures and close the door to the other dimension once and for all. Later, Dexter and Maddie put on their brave faces and head into the building where the big server is. But, oh no, as soon as they get inside, they see all sorts of spooky ghost-like creatures surrounding them. Dexter is super strong and holds the door shut so the creatures can't get in. He tells Maddie she has to be the one to go to the server. Maddie nods and rushes down the hall. She finds a door and opens it. She can hardly believe her eyes. She's in the room with the server. She goes up to the computer, but then she sees something weird. It's like a video of herself on the screen. Suddenly, she hears a whisper and turns around. There's a shadowy figure coming towards her, kind of flickering like a bad TV signal. The screen shows a scary picture of her being grabbed by a bunch of hands. The shadowy figure starts pulling at her, trying to take her soul. Just then, Dexter bursts in like a superhero and pulls her out of the room. He tells her he's going to go back and finish this for good. Dexter runs back to the server room and starts typing like crazy. He manages to upload the virus, hoping it will put an end to all of these creepy things happening. Grabbing Maddie, they both make a run for it and dash outside. But guess what? The next morning, the system turns itself back on and the gate to the other world opens up again. Dexter and Maddie jump in a car and speed away from the city, which looks like a ghost town now. All the phones, internet, and TV are going bonkers with weird stuff because of the ghostly creatures. Then, they hear a message on the radio from the army telling people to head out to a safe place outside the city. As they drive, they start to realize something big. Their lives are never going to be the same. They'll have to live out in the countryside, far away from all the gadgets and gizmos they used to love. The movie ends with Maddie's voice talking over the scene. She sounds wiser, like she's learned a big lesson. She says that people will have to go back to living simple lives like in the old days. The cities and all the fancy tech stuff are now under the control of the ghostly beings. The screen fades as they drive into a future where they'll have to rediscover what it means to be human without all the modern gadgets. It's a bittersweet ending as they leave behind the world they knew, but maybe, just maybe, they'll find something even more meaningful along the way. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.